I first saw Beach Boats actually um, on the Captain magazine. It's actually sent to me by my boys. I've got three boys that are, really like their fishing and um, like their boats and that sort of thing. So they sent me this video and said, check this out, Dad. This is a really nice looking boat. We went over there and, and had a look at it and straight away, this, you know, it, it is a really sexy boat to, to look at. And at that point, you know, I'd sort of, I was in the car and we pulled up beside and Roger was there. I didn't know, I had never met Roger before. Wound the, win, wound the window down and just said to him, you take credit card, I want a slot. <laughs> was I really looking for a boat? I'd sort of, not really, because I was, I was running, running some other, you know, nice boats at the time. But um, being from Gippsland sort of helped influence my decision to be nice to, you know, to get a, a locally built boat. Yeah, the size of the boat, this one is um, 27 feet or 8.25 metres. It's coming on the trailer. Um, this one's in it. Currently, we weighed it the other day half full of fuel or nearly three quarters full of fuel and it was in at 40, 4,200 kilos on the trailer. And that's with the sea keeper and obviously an esky full of beer um, ready to go. I want to go back to a good hard top um, and a boat that had the capacity to run high fuel loads uh, for the type of work I do. So when we go um, with our mothership, you know, we, we want to go out and fish for three days effectively. So you, you'd go out, you'd anchor up out of the reef and you're in and out for three, for several days. So you need, you need to have large fuel loads, twin engine and comfortable. I posed the question to Roger um, about changing some of the furniture setups in the boat um, to make it a more comfortable boat, bigger eskies, I wanted to run a sea keeper. And then obviously, you know, the electronics for all, all the types of fishing we want to do. I guess um, going to a, a trailer boat, again, that was for, more suitable for our, our local area. The big boats are, are great, but I wanted something that not only I could tow behind my big boat, but something that I can shoot down to Port Welshpool or to Inverloch or, um, you know, up to Bermagui and, and Portland and move it around. The fuel figures currently on that boat are um, I'm getting between 1.2 and 1.3 sitting on um, between 30 and 35 mile an hour, depending, yeah. So it's really, given the um, size of the fuel capacity, it's 700 litres in this boat, it's giving me really good um, long range to do multiple days out, you know, if I'm doing that up north or if I'm down south, obviously I can run out to the islands without any problems right down to, to um, you know, Deal Island and down to um, the um, Flinders Island, do runs down to there without any problems at all. So with, with the furniture of the boat, I, um, I wanted something that was um, comfortable to sit on. Um, when you're running a spread of lures, you can sit back, lay back and watch those lures. You can take, you know, the driver and, and the passengers can take it in turns. If you're out for all day, if we go out sword fishing or even if you're pulling lures all day, you need to be comfortable standing up all day or crouching down is, is, is not great. So to have something that was really comfortable was, was really something that I was looking for. And big fridging. I put um, both the boxes in them, 120 litres, you know, fully foam insulated uh, fridges. It is an option to put plates in them, but I, I haven't done that as yet. I'll just see how it goes running ice. I'll keep it, keep it a little bit simple. Is that better? Oh, fuck, we're off. <laughs> With my electronics, um, I've run Garmin in my other boats. Um, so for me, it was uh, Garmin was the, the obvious choice because of simplicity in using it. Um, I've had it before, I understand it. In this boat, I've got um, all the electronics set up um, to use it in all different modes. Um, that's the beauty of the Garmin, it's very user friendly. You know, we can just select our home and if we're in our cruising mode, it brings our screens up to suit cruising. We see we've got some dancers in the background. Oh, yeah. They're not very good at it, but anyway, we probably should put some tunes on, but we'll get that going later. Um, if we want to, if we want to do docking mode, you're backing up. Um, yeah, obviously you've got the screen here when you need them, as well as um, fishing. You've got your screens here set up. 
your, your high wide and your, and your low transducers set up to pick up what you want to do in fishing as well as um, having your cameras to, to look out the back. One of the features we've got set up here, we've got um, being the fox she, uh, in stealth. So this is when we're, we're doing our secretive work when nobody knows about us when we head out in the dark. Um, but we've got the Fleur night vision camera. Um, fabulous bit of gear. Um, a great safety feature if you get caught in fog last year in the, in the smoke um, with all the bushfires, but um, you can just see straight through. Um, obviously the, the vision you're getting here now in the daytime, it looks exactly the same at night, without a doubt. It's um, a, a great piece of equipment if, you, um, if you're using do, or doing night work, especially when you've got a glass screen um, and you haven't got any other navigational um, aids, um, as in beacons to look for. Um, it'll pick up anything in the water. You can be travelling at night, you can see whales, you can see logs, you can see any debris in the water. It's um, really good for, say, safe boating at night. Yeah, look, with this boat I set it up with a, um, a sea keeper. You know, I've been quoted as saying as, as the wife keeper. I probably might have got a bit of shit hung on me for that, but at the end of the day, I do actually, um, my wife actually does come out with me and enjoy my fishing um, as well, so. And, and if you want to spend all day at it, you know, and, and if you can afford it, it's a great thing. They really take the, the, um, the heartache out of, and the, and the, the stress of the, by the end of the day out of it. When I first looked at it, it didn't have dry storage hatches underneath, and it's one thing that I've had in other boats, and I find that is, is definitely a must. So we've made some really good improvements to the boat. Roger's done it for us. He's, um, we put all fully um, moulded dry storage under floor, um, which was almost a given to fit a sea keeper. You really have to have that dry, dry compartment. But it's just nice to have the other compartments as dry. So that was a, a big improvement on the whole floor system of the boat, um, dropping down into the, the, the sumps um, and then straight over the side. There's been some great improvements on the dive door, just the, the, the visual look out of it um, with the, the latching system is improved as well as the, um, um, it's absolutely dry. You don't get any water in through the door and I know that's a problem with, you know, I've seen it with other boats, you know, that they've always got water coming in. These things do not leak, you know, which is, which is really a given, it should, they shouldn't leak. Yeah, one thing um, that I wanted to speak to Roger about when we were designing the boat was uh, just the finish of it and um, that's one thing that is really, you know, the bar's been set really high. Um, having finishings that you'd expect to see in a sports car, to have it in a boat, you know, we see the Americans do it that well, why can't Australians do it? So, you know, we've got all this hatching on the leather on the dash, you know, it's really good because it stops the reflection of the white up on the dash and just the padding on the sides. Yeah, you know, the checkering right through, the diamond checkering right through in the, in the sea deck. Good thing about the boat too, I like, that it's big enough that we can go down to Refuge Cove. It's, um, we can set two of us can quite comfortably sleep in the V-berth and stretch out. Uh, it's not a pokey little cabin. A short person can actually stand up still in the cabin, you know, if you're too tall you can't, but um, still, to be nearly full height in a um, cabin this size, to stand up and get changed is, is great. The wiring on the boat, I've got to say, is a work of art. You don't, until you actually really see some good wiring, you don't really appreciate it. There's a lot going on in this boat. We've got um, sea zone, we've got three screens, you know, we've got the sound systems, we've got sea keepers, we've got, we're running, you know, two sets of battery, we've got house banks, you know, electric winches, you know, all, all, all the feature lighting. There's a lot going on in this boat, but to put it all in and have it so neatly labelled, laid out, is a, is a real credit to the, you know, the team doing the wiring. It's certainly that we're, we're really, I'm sort of really impressed with that. So the, um, the construction of the boat, uh, being a resin infused boat, um, Obviously watching the process of them building it and you can see the, the amount of fibre going into it um, is enormous, you know, it's, it's um, obviously it's giving it so much more strength as well as it makes it, the boat so much lighter. So, and which allows obviously to, to go to these bigger sizes, you know, you can, if you're a light fit up boat, you know, um, you can get to the, you know, your, your land cruiser towing, you know, or if you go to a big fit up like this one uh, with Sea Keeper, you know, you can still, you know, get into it with a Ram 1500, that type of scenario. So 
it's great to have a boat, a boat that's um, comfortable um, and looks really good, but at the end of the day, it's still got to perform. And that's when I actually took um, one of the earlier boats out with Roger, and I've got to say, I was super impressed. You know, the, it drops straight. You know, you, you, you back yourself, and, and you, if you want to put it, push it in hard and turn it, it is like a sports car. I, it was something that blows a lot of people away. Then I take them for a run, and you throw it into the corner. It's not letting go, you know, and, and you actually have to really make sure you warn people because otherwise they're out the side of the boat. It, it grabs that hard and, and just doesn't let go. It just corners, no cavitation at all. Haven't heard it cavitate. Only time we hear prop noises when the thing's out of the water because we're going 40, 50 knots and, and jumping off the top of waves. That's the only time you hear any prop noise. Other than that, it, it's, it's a sports car to drive. I just love it.